60 minutes overtime. Well, thank you very much. 60 Minutes is happy to be here. This week on 60 Minutes, we're going to look into the amazing world of artificial intelligence. We are being shown astounding new technologies. You're looking at one of them right now. That's not actually a picture of me. That is a computer representation of me in three dimensions. It's a new kind of technology that will allow people to feel like they're in the same room together. What is the point of all this? But I hope it makes it feel like you and I are completely together, no matter where we are in the world. Andrew Narker showed us a prototype of Project Starline an AI video conferencing experience Google is developing. It's not a picture of you, it's essentially you. I'm now on the other side of the building, but this magic window makes it feel like we're exactly together again. The sense that I have sitting here is that I could just reach right out and take that out sure. of your hand. Google allowed us inside its artificial intelligence laboratory Hey, Scott. Welcome to Google. And we also had a rare interview with Google's CEO, Sundar Pichai. What do you compare AI to in the course of human civilization? You know, I've always thought of AI as the most profound technology humanity is working on, more profound than fire or electricity or anything that we have done in the past. Why so? It gets at the essence of what intelligence is, uh, what humanity is. You know, we are developing technology which for sure one day will be far more capable uh, than anything we have ever seen before. For me, the most amazing thing that I saw at Google was their Bard chatbot. We played with a famous six-word short story often attributed to Hemingway. For sale, baby shoes never worn. Wow. The only prompt we gave was finish this story. In five seconds, holy cow, the shoes were a gift from my wife, but we never had a baby. They were. Sweet. I had a little bit of an emotional reaction when I was working with Bard because I had the sense that I was meeting an intelligence that I had never conceived of and an intelligence that I was sure that I would never understand. I can totally understand what you're talking about, and I don't want to read too much into it today where the state of the art technology is. We are humans interacting with something which in some ways is mirroring humanity back in certain ways. What are the downsides? I mean, the downsides at some point, does humanity lose control of the technology it's developing? Control? when it comes to disinformation and generating fake images. We saw the potential with Google's AI that creates pictures out of words. This is text in pictures. Exactly. Out. Eli Collins is a vice president at Google. You can generate a picture of pretty much most things you imagine. I don't, I'm happy to put in a prompt if, if you've got something. Uh, let's try pink taxi cabs on Fifth Avenue. All right, pink. Taxi cabs. Instantly, we saw a shade unknown on New York cabs. Next, Collins gave us a first look at an AI system Google has not released yet, experimental text-to-video, which instantly answered our prompt, golden retriever with wings. Oh, look at that. As with Bard, this has safety filters. For example, it doesn't create images of people. Every Google executive we talked to said that there is a pressing need for government to regulate this new frontier of artificial intelligence because it has the power to change just about all of our lives. To be clear, this is going to be a cat and mouse game, right? People are going to use AI to be more sophisticated, no different from how we have tackled spam and Gmail and we are constantly developing better algorithms to detect that they are spam. We will need to do the same with deep fakes, audio and video, but over time, look, there has to be regulation. You're going to need laws against, there have to be consequences for creating deep fake videos which cause harm to society. 
I don't usually hear CEOs of major corporations ask for government regulation. Anybody who has worked with AI for a while, you know, you realize this is something uh, so different and so deep that you know, we would need uh, societal regulations to think about how to adapt. The question of our age going forward is going to be whether these machine learning systems replace human capabilities, replace human creativity. We are only just now getting a sense of what they're capable of. And so these are places where society needs to get together and have a conversation. What do we need these intelligent machines to do for us? What do we prefer to do for ourselves? And where do we place value?